This is the final episode of Ladies Talking Timber Sluds. Um, I'm Carrie Barton and I'm here with Shelly Balls. And we are going to be talking about um, the question that's, I think, on everybody's mind right now. Did you snow check and what did you get? Um, Before that, though, just want to do a quick intro. Um, Shelly and I actually met just a few months ago, like back in December, I think. Yep. Yeah, December. Um, So we got the opportunity to go to um, a 22 model year test ride and ride all the new timber sleds. And that's how we met. Um, Shelly, give us some background about what your history is with with riding with timber sleds you know where where do you come from yeah so uh a lot of my history is in actually snowmobiling so just racing the rimshaw circuit and racing it the jackson hole hill climb um but typically like when i first rode a snow bike and it was my husband's and i was like oh these are kind of fun you know and over the years i kind of hopped back and forth on it from my sled to his bike and then last year, uh, being pregnant and riding a snowmobile, I was like, I don't know, this is pretty, pretty rough towards the end of the season. Cause I was getting pretty big by then. And I was riding his snow bike more than I was riding my sled. And it was just cool. How, how many different places I could go so much easier. Um, not only just being pregnant, but, uh, but in general, like if I wasn't pregnant, it was just so fun to be able to freaking fly through the trees and not have to worry about, Oh, I'm not going to catch a ski here. Oh, I need to hold this side hill forever, you know? So it was kind of cool being able to switch over and a really fun experience this season to have the opportunity actually. Nice. Nice. And I think that's what's so cool about uh, timber sleds actually is because my background is completely different. Like I've never ridden a sled before. I've never done snow sports. I am 100% dirt bike background racing, doing endurance racing, trail riding, backcountry riding, um, adventure riding, but um, nothing on the snow. And last year was my first season um, and just same sort of thing. Like it seemed like a cool idea. Somebody mentioned it to me like, hey, do you snow bike? And I'm like, no, but that sounds like fun. And I bought a snow bike a week later. It was actually Dustin that was like, what, do you snow bike? And I'm like, no, but I should. And uh, got one and just went all in and had like same sort of experience. Like, oh, I can go out and like single track ride, but go anywhere and just like bomb through trees and have like the same dirt bike experience, but on the snow. So I think it's interesting how people from completely different backgrounds all are like, these things are so fun. So that's one of the things I love about them for sure. So what, you, what do you ride now? What's your track? Yeah. So I ride the 129 arrow three right now. Um, and that's been honestly, like I've loved it for being never having a snow bike before and just going out, um, on that arrow three this year, it's been awesome. Like it, it is a goer. I'll, I'll be following yeah. snowbills up, up through trees and, um, kind of steep too. And I, I feel confident and I honestly, I don't get stuck that often, um, falling sled, which is pretty crazy. Um, because a lot of times when we went out this winter, it was either, um, that really, really deep snow, uh, that everyone was getting stuck on it. Like even the, the snowmobiles were having a hard time going, or it was kind of that, uh, bad face kind of snow where it was bottomless. So it was amazing how good that arrow three did go. Yeah. And that's 129 inch track. So we, again, from coming from almost as completely different backgrounds as we did, we also ride right now, almost the complete opposite track. So I started the season on an arrow 120 LE and then went to do the test ride for the 22 model year bikes and got to ride a riot and was like, okay, I need to get a different, need to get a different. <laughs> so I came home from that. And my dealer still had a riot, uh, Ellie in stock. And I was like, put my name on it. I'm coming to get it tomorrow. So I'm on a riot 120 LE right now. So again, we're about as far on the opposite end of the riding spectrum and background spectrum as we possibly could. Get. <laughs> um, so super active, super short track riot, and then super stable, super powerful Aero 3. Um, so what did you snow check for this year? Yes. So after, you know, riding the, the bikes back in December, those kits, I mean, 
it was honestly a hard decision. I barely just snow checked a few days ago. So honestly, <laughs> it took us that many days to figure out what I was going to snow check uh, because there is a lot of different options that are coming out and yeah. trying to decide which option would be best. Um, we were just making sure we had the right decision. So we ended up going with the, the Riot 3 Pro S. Um, so we've got that slammed seat height, which is, I think, honestly, riding in the spring snow, I kind of was lacking that confidence. Um, and I think that S series, the slam version is going to give me that confidence of just being a little bit lower, um, more gravity, um, closer to the ground there. So I'm pretty excited to try the S series, uh, actually. So yeah, riot three, I'm feeling a little bit more adventurous, you know, for next year, switching from the arrow to the riot. And I'm actually like really excited for the snow to happen. So that that's really funny too, because so we rode together at that event in December. And then just a few weeks ago, we got the opportunity to ride again at the climb women's snow ride. Um, and I remember at one point, you turned around and you looked at me and you're like, let's go get rowdy. I remember you specifically <laughs> saying that. And I was like, yeah, like, this is awesome. Like one, I don't get to ride with women a lot. Like I've actually never ridden with, with women on snow bikes other than the two times we've ridden. <laughs> Same with me. Yeah. yeah there's <laughs> not many out there. So one girls are out there getting rowdy. And two, we're able to ride kits now that actually give us a lot of confidence. So I think once you get on that riot, it's going to be even more of yeah. that. Oh, yeah, I can just go anywhere. Oh, I can just go flip my front end around and I can go do that little turn. <laughs> I'm excited to see you ride on that new new track. I mean, I won't be doing any, you know, Darren Teal or Justin Cox moves. Not yet. yet. <laughs> Not yet um we'll work up to those yeah so I did the same thing I I went with Riot um did the pro model and did the S so Riot 3 S pro is what I'm going for um so again totally opposite backgrounds totally opposite tracks that we started on and we've we've now ended up picking the same model for 22 um in talking to my dealer he said every snow check has been that riot three either in the S really? or regular model. So um I think it's gonna be a pretty g big game changer for yeah. everybody's ride next year. Um okay. he posted something about he was talking about the Riot 3 Pro and and he he said and I quote and I literally wrote it down because it was so funny. It's a one-way ticket to Traction Town on the Wheelie Express. And that was like <laughs> Thank, thank you, Cody B, for that quote, because it's amazing. That is literally, like, one of the best ways I've heard this track, you know, explained. It and is. Having the opportunity to ride them, you know, I can't think of a better way to, to explain how it feels to be on that thing. It's yeah, just for sure. super active. It climbs, which everybody's like, oh, right, you're not going to be able to climb big stuff. And it's like, oh, no, you can climb just fine on that Riot 3. It's not a problem. And that's the thing. That's why I went with the arrow the this year season is yeah. because I was like, oh, I, well, I better not do the riot because I, you know, I heard, oh, it, it wheelies more. And so if you're trying to climb stuff, it's going to be a little harder. And so I was like, oh, well, I better stick to the arrow. And so when that riot three came out, I mean, yeah. game changer, that's, yeah. that was exciting change there. And then how you can adjust the shocks yeah. and to climb better, to give you more of that cushion. I mean, that, that is awesome. That's exciting stuff. Yeah. Well, and, and so like the riot I had, cause I, I got the same thing. Like all the guys I ride with are on 129s and they're all on arrows or they're on threes and they're like, you're not going to climb anything. And I'm like, I don't know. I think I'm going to be okay. And, um, with the, the 21, the shocks, it's a, the LE trim package, not the pro, um, this next season, the, the, um, QS three shocks that are on the LE versions this year are going to be on the premium trim kits next year. So you'll still have that option to get those shocks. But then the Pro is coming with the QS3 IVP, which has all the same adjustments so you can fine tune the way the Riot rides, but then it's also got this internal bypass system in it that makes it more compliant, makes it more um, uh, better big hit compliance. It, it eats up the chatter on the trail a little bit better. So 
the yeah. ability to adjust those track shocks makes the riot kind of anything you need it to be. And I definitely experienced that with just the QS3 shocks on my riot this last year. You know, if I knew I was going to be pulling big long climbs, I just pop off, switch my clickers. All right, I'm in climb mode. And we we called it climb mode or wheelie mode. It's like, oh, what <laughs> mode are you in? Climb mode. What mode are you in? Wheelie mode. Oh, we're gonna hit the groomer. All right, put it in the middle. So you yeah. learn kind of how to use all these different clickers to your advantage, depending on what conditions you're going to be in and that was with the 120 the 120 definitely it's a little shorter so climbing you do have to be a little bit more aggressive um the riot three now is the 129 which it's like the best of the riot and the arrow and they just smashed it together into this like super track so yeah. it's it's gonna be a rock star i'm, I'm super excited like I, snow season can't get here soon enough and it's <laughs> totally ended yet so, so what I'm curious what your favorite part of riding it was on that demo ride. Do you know, I think honestly, the playfulness of it was kind of fun to me because I coming from uh you know not a not at the level of a dirt biker as you are, Carrie. I was kind of hesitant on getting something intense. You know, I wanted to stick with something that was more like a snowmobile, honestly. And that's why I chose that arrow the first year. Cause I was like, I don't know if, I don't know if I even like snow bikes, you know? <laughs> so being in that, <laughs> yeah, being in that seat, I was like, Oh, I, sh I should, you know, play it safe, you know? And so being able to get some seat time on that riot, I, I really had a fun time trying to wheelie it. Um, yeah. You know, actually getting that ski up with some help from my, timber sled um bastard teammates but it was fun to be able to it kind of play around and see what those could do oh absolutely and then the other thing on those that um was really cool is the new tss that has the the the, the tss now has a clicker that you can change things so you can put it in like a fixed strut mode and that's one of the big things that um with the riot you know it it behaves more playfully and it's more of a wheelie machine if you've got that fixed strut. But if you're doing a lot of like backcountry and you're just like riding it for all types of riding, like I was, um, you do need a little bit of that bottom out comfort at times. And so um, yeah. being a fairly small rider, the TSS actually was set up really stiff stock for me. So it was kind of like having an X tune. Um, which X tune is something you can do to the TSS to make it a little stiffer and, and better for a riot. Um, this next year, the, the model year 22 TSS was specifically designed for these new systems. So um, you'll have the option to put it into like a soft fixed mode. So it still has a little bit of bottom out give, but it'll still wheelie. And then if you want you know, full suspension, you just click that clicker and then you've got, you know, a, a trail machine if that's what you want. So um, again, all those little things are making the Riot much more of an all around track than it used to be. Um, so that's, I think, part of what's bringing so many people to it now is kind of their main ride. Because I used to hear people were like, oh, I have an arrow and then I have a Riot for like fun play days. It's like, <laughs> I have two, so I've got to make this one work for everything. Um, <laughs> it's always progressing. It's progressing so fast. Like you look at the tracks from 21 and you're like, well, you know, what really, what really could change that much? You know, those, <laughs> those QS3 shocks were already great. Oh, you made them better. Okay, cool. Or, oh, you made this lighter or, oh, yep. We all, we all expected probably, I think, to see the riot on a 129 or a riot with a three in some configuration. So I think we all saw that coming. Um, but it, like the trio, the trio is better now. So it's just, again, it's still so early in its history as a sport that I think we're going to continue to see these really cool like technology changes happening pretty fast. And yeah. again, I think it's going to progress. It's going to help progress writing and what people are doing with these even faster. So it's pretty neat to see. I'm, I'm so excited. Oh, yes. other cool thing. So if you have a riot... Um, and even the arrow, a lot of the accessories from 21 will transfer over if I'm not mistaken. So like the gas can kits yep. and the bags and everything. So that was the other thing. It kind of eased the pain of buying a whole new <laughs> kit it, when I just bought one this year, um, was that my accessories were going to be able to swap over. So, um, and I put that 
I put that uh, gas can on my system or my track actually after I was at that ride and I was like oh this thing is sweet um, and I got that same bag too <laughs> so I was like all these things are going to swap over and I don't have to buy all new accessories so that kind of eased the the pain of set, it, hitting submit <laughs> on the snow check but uh it really does though that I mean that gas can it's a game changer I know yeah. um, people uh, that I ride with quite often in there on the Yeti and they've just, you know, had some issues with getting the right gas can that they really like. And right off the bat with that timber sled gas can, like I was just satisfied. And yeah. even those people were kind of like, oh, that is a pretty good system. So, um, and then me for like my accessories and having those bags, I'm all about the bags and the gauntlet covers. And so it was really, you know, like, um, it was, it was really nice to be able to take those off and be able to keep them for the next year's bike um, that's, that's coming in. Uh, and that's one thing that, you know, I was, I bought that arrow three and at the beginning of the season, I was like, Oh, I'll, I'll probably hold on to this, you know, kit and the bike for a few years, <laughs> seasons, you know, yeah. and then like I go to that ride uh, in December and I'm like, all right. <laughs> I guess I had to uh, snow check one. So, and I've never snow checked one before. So it was a really fun experience. And I was actually yeah. really satisfied with how easy it was, how simple it was to work with your dealer. I mean, yeah. it was a nice, nice process. And I'm, I'm pretty excited to go pick it up this fall. So yeah. how much of a game changer has that S been for you? It's, it's honestly been incredible. Um, I came back from that ride one, just giving me the confidence to really try to like hammer down in some like fast turns, um, some really like crazy climbs going through trees. Um, one, the confidence of all the other ambassadors being like, hey, you got this, go do it. I'm like, okay, cool. You've got faith in me. I have faith in me too now. Um, but then getting on that, that short track and just really being able to push and feel comfortable. I even came back and jumped on my, my regular height arrow and felt more confident because I had pushed limits a little bit further and I knew where yeah. those edges were. Um, and then jumping on the riot as soon as I was able to go pick it up, like I went riding, like I, I went and picked it up, brought it home, built it. And we were like out riding like two days later. And um, a couple of my buddies that I ride with were just like, where did you come from? <laughs> riding like this, like two weeks ago, like what? And it, it was a cool feeling because not just, it wasn't just that I felt more comfortable and I felt like I was riding better. Like people were noticeably like, wow, you are so much more confident on this bike. Like, yeah. wow, game changer for you, go carry. And yeah. that's, that's how big of a difference it was just to be able to have that little bit lower center of gravity. And I think one of the big misconceptions about why people want the short model, everybody's like, oh, well, you don't touch the ground anyways in snow. And it's like, well, not it's not really about just being able to touch the ground um exactly. yeah in the parking lot it's about being able to touch the ground and get out of a icy hard packed parking lot without falling over in front of people <laughs> i've ever done that slam your helmet yep <laughs> right might have happened a time or two um not on not on the s though um it's that's that's those comfort times when yeah touching the ground is nice and it makes a big difference to have the short model but when you're out in the snow it's not necessarily about being able to touch the ground it really has to do with that center of gravity and the higher you up the higher up you are and you're trying to lean into turns you're you're you you have more leverage the higher up you are you exactly. get down on that track you get down in it a little bit more and you're able to carve more comfortably and not feel like you're just tipping over so um it really for me was getting that center of gravity down like I could deal with like the stupid moments in the parking lots but <laughs> <laughs> I mean they weren't pretty but hey I can deal with it um I'm not too proud to say I've fallen over in front of a lot of people in a parking lot um, <laughs> we've all been there we've all been there <laughs> but it was really like when I was able to get into the trees and really carve harder and do these really much more aggressive much more rapid direction changes and feel comfortable doing it and powering out and not getting that like oh tippy 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 oh there's a tree well you know yeah so that was really big for me um just kind of gaining that confidence and and you know the easier it is to get out into where you want to go the better you feel when you get there if you've just struggled because you can barely climb onto your bike on flat ground you just start the day off feeling a little defeated 
So right. it just overall increases kind of just the general like fun of the day, just to feel like you're in control of that thing all the time. So S, the slam series, just riding in there was a huge game changer. Yeah. I felt so much more confident going around the corners on that bike than I ever did on on like the the bike kit that I have right now, just because yeah. it was slammed. Um, yeah. And and the same, like I went to that photo shoot and then afterwards um it was like a couple weeks later we went out riding again and I was with my husband and I was like oh I want to you know jump off this little log going uphill and he's like all right you know and so I I start rallying up the hill you know and I jump up the lot or jump up over the log and then come down and um kind of do a loop around him and then come down and stop he's like oh man you you're hauling <laughs> like it was just yeah. that, that seat time and that confidence and seeing other timber sled athletes out there yeah. do what they do best. I mean, I was like, Oh, that's how you do that. Or, Oh, you know, almost taking notes, like notes in my head. Oh, okay. Yeah. That, I can do that on these. I can do this. And so it yeah. was kind of the same experience you had Carrie. Like I came back with that confidence. I came back with like all these different things that I wanted to try myself. Um, and just that confidence to be, you know, quicker, faster, yeah, have more fun. Yeah. While we're out here. Yeah. yeah. It, I mean, it, it really is crazy. Like, um, yeah, you, when you know, when you have that faith in this, the equipment and you're comfortable on it, you start to look at lines differently too. Exactly. It's like, oh, I'm not worried about that little thing at the entrance now. Cause am I going to get enough momentum and be able to, you know, get going and, oh my gosh, I'm so high up here you're just looking straight up at what you want to go for now. And um, like you said, kind of taking notes and seeing what's possible. That's absolutely like, I'm sit like, oh, okay. You go ride that and you go ride that and you do that thing. And I'm sitting there going, oh, okay. Yeah. So do, oh yeah, I see. Yeah, okay. I'm gonna try that next time. Yeah. All right. Well, um, I think we've kind of covered our snow check reveals right now and kind of some of the things that we're excited about for 22 um yeah yeah I'm kind of excited to hear what what everyone else snow checked honestly like what's the consensus out there I know I've talked to a couple of the other uh other ambassadors and sounds like a lot of riot three pros some riot three pro s's um I think even some of the guys at timber sled are planning on riding the slam models next year oh and none of them are like particularly short people they're very yeah. average height guys so um I've definitely heard that that people are really even if you're not a short person those s's are kind of gaining a lot of momentum with people of all heights so um they just ride they ride really nice um well I think that's a wrap for uh for ladies talking timber sleds for this season because I'm losing snow in Oregon I, I'm kind of we've lost like two feet of base and it's 70 degrees out right now. So I don't think I'm going to be able to get back out on my track this year. Unfortunately. Yeah. yeah. We've, we've been losing that snow fast. We didn't really have a good base pretty much the whole season. It was kind of that sugary, no moisture to it. And then we got that big February storm and we had a couple of really good rides after that February storm. And then it's just been melting really quick after that yeah. so and it's fun that we have seasons honestly because we have the opportunity to stay outside get outside go adventure see the world out there so that's yeah. what I really love about it too yeah and you know especially in areas like Oregon where we don't have as much access to snow the areas where we can get into good snow are much more limited it's a hard sell to have a sled dedicated to that shorter season Right. So That's having, cool. having the, the ability to convert the dirt bike over to something that's usable in the winter and then something that's usable in, in the summer on the dirt, especially in those states that don't have sustained really long snow seasons. Um, that's, that's a big draw for a lot of people. All right. Well, on that note, let's wrap it up. Um, you know, it's been a great season. We've met so many fun people. We've gotten to ride in so many cool places and that's all because of this awesome sport. And I, I just, I love it so much. Um, and I can't wait for our adventures next year. Yes. Yeah. I think we've already got some, 
some talk of some some more ladies group rides and uh maybe some summer dirt bike trips with some of the timber sled girls so uh yeah yeah Pretty exciting time Pretty exciting stuff we're we're rooting for snow next season and yeah. hopefully an earlier season too yeah yes praying for snow always so <laughs> So yeah, yeah Shelly, it was a pleasure meeting you this season and thank you so much for being an awesome, inspiring chick out there on your timber sled. And uh, I wasn't doing much inspiring. I know Carrie was doing the inspiring. <laughs> no, you looked at me and said, let's get rowdy. I just agreed. So <laughs> it goes both ways. No, it was way fun. Yep. Yeah, thanks, yeah. Carrie, so much. And um, yeah. I appreciate all the, all the, the time and the effort that you guys have put into these uh, ladies talking timber sled videos, they've been a really good, uh, fun experience. So yeah. Sharing the snow bike love always. Yes. Awesome. All right, Shelly, with that, we're going to sign off. Um, thanks everybody who watched videos and commented and send us ideas and um, support was supportive and liked things. Um, it was great having the opportunity to help impart some of the knowledge and the joy and the love for, for snow biking and for timber sled riding that we have found over this last year or two-ish. And um, yeah, we look forward to next season. And uh, as soon as we get on those Riot 3S Pros, we'll start back up some videos and uh, show you guys what they're all about. Yeah. Thanks,